In the vast expanse of the open ocean, a new era of naval warfare is unfolding. The world's most advanced warship, the Zumwalt class destroyer, is at the forefront of this revolution, armed with state of the art weaponry and cutting edge technology. But when a hostile enemy fleet threatens to disrupt global stability, the Zumwalt must prove its mettle in a deadly game of cat and mouse. As tensions escalate and the stakes grow higher, the crew of the Zumwalt faces a daunting challenge to defend their ship and their nation against an enemy that is faster, more agile, and more technologically advanced than ever before. With the fate of the world hanging in the balance, they must summon all their courage, skill, and ingenuity to emerge victorious. As the Zumwalt charges into battle, the roar of its engines echoes across the waves. Hypersonic missiles streak through the sky leaving trails of smoke and fire in their wake. The crew works tirelessly, each member playing their part in this high-stakes game of warfare. But as the battle rages on, the Zumwalt finds itself facing overwhelming odds. Will the crew be able to overcome their fears and emerge victorious? Only time will tell in this thrilling tale of modern naval warfare. Need for speed, Zumwalt destroyer fires hypersonic missiles. The U.S. Navy's troubled Zumwalt class of guided missile destroyers could each end up with 12 hypersonic missiles in the coming years. Speaking at the annual Naval Submarine League, Vice Admiral Johnny Wolfe, head of the Navy's strategic systems programs, told reporters that the Zumwalt's hulls have enough onboard space to accommodate multiple missile tubes that would ultimately house hypersonic weapons. We're talking about deploying this system on DDG-1000 in 2025. That's three years from now, Vice Admiral Wolf said. We got to get on with getting all of the design for the Zumwalt, getting all of those tubes in there, as we pulled out the forward gun mounts. We've gotten to put these large diameter tubes in there, and then finish the integration work into the combat system. The Navy originally intended the stealthy Zumwalt class to support troops on shore with a pair of naval guns, essentially advanced long-range 155mm artillery pieces. However, that plan never came to fruition, as the ammunition for the naval guns was prohibitively expensive. The hypersonic missile in development for the Zumwalts will be fielded in two variants, one for the Navy and one for the Army, a development and acquisition strategy that will reduce program costs for both branches. You need to have the same lethality no matter where you're at. And that's what this weapon does, Vice Admiral Wolf said. It's all the same with the lethality to get after all these targets. It just depends on who's launching it, right, whether it's the Army, or whether it's a Zumwalt, or whether it's a Virginia-class submarine. Integrating hypersonic weapons into the Zumwalts will also give them a clear mission, a significant development for a platform whose purpose has been unclear. On these high-end systems, it is no longer affordable for a single service to do that. We're working with the Office of the Secretary of Defense. We're working with the Army and with what our resource sponsor is doing to figure out how we build this capability once and get out to multiple platforms, Wolf explained. It's strategic, but it's not nuclear. If you look at the numbers, particularly with what we're going to with the ranges, it is very much a strategic asset. You can hold very high-value targets at risk, and you can do that with all these various platforms, Vice Admiral Wolf explained to USNI News. Though not yet in service, hypersonic-armed Zumwalts, combined with their stealthy hull design, could prove to be useful.